These are the chapter 6 notes 10 on conditional probability. Now we've talked about conditional probability problems frequently in this unit here. Uh, recall a couple formulas um, that are on your formula sheet here. The probability of A given B. Now remember that this vertical line here refers to both the statements given if out of and other things as well. The probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Also I want you to recall that the probability of A and B means the same thing as the probability of B and A. These are basically synonymous with each other. So we're going to look at some examples where we have a probability statement and in each blank I'd like you to translate the text into an appropriate probability statement and then the answer box will use the probability statements you constructed to set up and solve an appropriate equation. So the probability that a student is taking biology is 0 0.80. We could rewrite that as the probability of B for biology equals 0 0.80. The probability that a student is taking algebra and biology is 0 0.40. So we could do A for algebra, and then our symbol for and biology equals 0 0.40. And then we're supposed to find the probability that a student is taking algebra given they're taking biology. So we're looking for the probability a student is taking algebra given they're taking biology. This is what we're looking for. And in our answer box, we're supposed to use our probability statements you constructed to set up and solve an appropriate algebra equation. So we essentially have all three parts in this problem that we need. We have the probability of A given B, which we're trying to figure out, the probability of A and B, which is this value, and the probability of B, which is this value. So this problem is pretty straightforward. To find the probability of A given B, we're going to take probability of A and B, which is 0 0.40 and divide it by the probability of B, which is 0 0.80. Pretty easy problem. When you divide these two numbers, 4 over 8 is 50%. So our probability of A given B is 50%. The probability a student is taking algebra given they're taking biology is 50%. Let's look at a different example where we don't necessarily have A's and B's. The probability a student plays football is 0 0.20. So we'll abbreviate that P of F for football equals 0 0.20. The probability that a student wrestles and plays football is 0.06. So we have wrestles and football, and that's equal to 0.06. And we're trying to find the probability that if a student plays football, they are also on the wrestling team. So the condition in this problem is if a student plays football. So Given a student plays football, out of all the football players, that's the second value here, what's the probability they are also on the wrestling team? So we're looking for the probability of W given F. Well, whether using A's and B's or W's and F's, basically it's the same formula that applies here. So instead of having an A and B on the top, we're going to have a W and F on the top. The denominator is the probability of the second item in the condition, which is this given part, the probability of f. And to find the probability of w, w given f, we're going to take the probability of w and f, which is 0.06, and we'll divide it by the probability of f, which is 0 0.20. When you take 0 0.06 and divide it by 0 0.20, that's 30%. It's the same thing as 3 out of 10, or 30%. The probability a student has missing work is 0 0.60. You can do M for missing work, that's 0 0.60. The probability that a student is tardy is 40%. We we'll call that the probability of T. If having missing work and being tardy are independent events, find the probability that a student who is tardy also has missing work. So. If having missing work and being tardy are independent events, we know, based on our independent events formula, that the probability of M and T is going to equal the probability of M times the probability of T. And usually means multiply, especially in the case of independent events, and always means multiply. So if the events are independent, this formula is automatically true. Now what we're trying to find is the probability that a student who is tardy, so out of all the students who are tardy, 
That's what's the condition. Out of all the tardy students, what's the probability the student has missing work? So we're trying to find the conditional probability of m given t, which is equal to the probability, similar to what we did last time, of m and t. And we divide it by the second probability that's listed in the conditions, the probability of t. And Mr. Herrick, they didn't tell us what the probability of m and t is. That's true, but we know that because the events are independent, you can find this probability by multiplying these two events together. So since the events are independent, you can take the probability of m times the probability of t, and we'll divide this by the probability of t. So substituting our numbers, we have 0.60 times 0 0.40 over 0 0.60. And if you understand the idea that these events will cancel out, if you were to actually crunch this out, you could do 0.24 over 0.6, and that's merely 0.40. Something else that you could actually use here is this idea as well. If the events are independent, the probability of m and t is just equal to the probability of m. And since you know the probability of m is 0 0.60, that's a really quick way of answering the same question. Here's a last example. The probability that a student has a Facebook account is 0 0.40. I doubt that's true anymore, but we're going with it. Probability that a student has a Facebook account and a Twitter handle is 0.28. That's the probability of Facebook and Twitter, 0.28. Did you know Mr. Herrick has a Twitter handle? I've got like 20 followers. It's pretty lame. Find the probability that a student tweets if they are on Facebook. So find the probability that a student tweets if they are on Facebook. This is a conditional probability. The if part is the second component. So we're looking for the probability a student tweets given if out of all the students that are on Facebook. So this is what we're trying to find here. The probability of t given f. We know that this would equal the probability of t and f divided by the probability of f. Now we know the probability of f and t, it's 0.28. So what's the probability of t and f? It's the exact same thing. So you could actually figure out the probability of f and t, which we know already, and divide it by the probability of f. Probability of f and t is 0.28. The probability of f is 0 0.40. When you divide these two values, you get 0 0.70. What I'm going to have you do next is pause the video and work on the problems on the back side of this and see what you come up with. Okay, just taking a look at the answers to the back side of your worksheet. On problem one, you're given the probability of C and R. The probability a game gets canceled if it's raining, that's 0 0.70. We don't know the probability of C and R, that's what we're trying to find in the problem. And we do know the probability of it is raining is 0 0.30. So when you plug the numbers into your formula here, you're going to multiply these two numbers to get your solution, and that probability ends up being 0.21. Number two is a little bit of a trick question here. I wasn't sure if you'd catch this or not. The probability when Monopoly is 0.40, the probability when Battleship is 0 0.60. To find the probability you win Monopoly given you win Battleship, the probability of M given B, uh, we could use our conditional probability formula. The problem is, is we don't know the probability of M and B. It does not say that the events are independent. So maybe if you win Monopoly, you're more likely to win Battleship. Um, we don't know that because it does not say anything about independence and we can't really assume that in this problem. We can't multiply these two probabilities to find the probability of M and B. It does not say the events are independent. We can't really assume that. This actually does not have enough information to answer the question. Problem three, we're trying to find the probability that Tigers win and somebody on the team hits a home run, the probability of T and H. We know the probability of H given T is 0.75. The probability of T the Tigers win is 0 0.60. We need to find this numerator value. Again, you can multiply these two values and get 0.45. On number four, we're looking for the probability the weather is sunny and the lions are awake. Similar to the last problem we did, we're trying to find the numerator. We know the probability the lions are awake is 0 0.40. We know the probability um, the weather is sunny when the lions are awake, so given when the lines are awake, out of the times the lines are awake, the weather is sunny 30% of that time. So that's probably of S given L. Plug the numbers in, multiply them, you get 0.12. 
Problem number five is probably a person who likes country also likes rock. So out of all the people who like country, what's the probability they like rock? So it's the probability of R given C. We know the probability of R and C is 0 0.30. The probability they like country C is 0 0.40. Divide these numbers, you get 0.75. Number six, what percent of people at the mall are male and visitors of the food court? The probability of M and F. We know the probability of M given F is 0 0.60 because it says out of people who visit the food court. So given F, out of all the Fs, 60% are male. That's the probability of M given F. So that's 0 0.60. The probability of being uh, a visitor of the food court is 0.25. You multiply these probabilities together and you get 0.15. That's your answer for six. Number seven, we're trying to find the probability of F given T, the probability there's a fire drill given I'm taking a test. Two ways of solving this, one is to use our conditional probability formula for events that are uh, independent. So because the events are independent, you can multiply the probability of F and the probability of T together and then divide that by the probability of T, you get 0.04. If you remember what we talked about on the front side, the probability of F given T is equal to the probability of F. That's a quicker formula, and you get 0.04 that way too. Number eight is looking for the probability there's an empty seat if the bus leaves on time, the probability of E given T. The probability of E and T is 0.20. The probability of T is 0.45. Divide them, you get 0.44. I'm letting E be empty seat, and T, bus leaves on time, T for time. And finally, number nine, the probability Stewie, Stewie studies for the test is 0.25. That's going to be your denominator. If Stewie studies, that's the given conditional probability, the probability he passes is 90%. That's going to go here. We're looking for the probability Stewie studies, and he passes the test. So again, we're going to multiply these two probabilities together, and you get 0.225. That takes you through your answers for these conditional probability examples.